Hi everyone, my name is Selena and I graduated from UCLA School of Nursing with my Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 2020. Today, I'm going to review the five study tips that have propelled me to graduate with cum laude honors from UCLA School of Nursing. These are not your ordinary study tips, they're the magic spells that turned my sleep deprived nights into moments of growth and understanding. From the hollowed halls of UCLA to the bustling hospital floors, here's how I cracked the code. Number Number one, the art of curiosity. I treated every lecture like a treasure hunt. Instead of passively taking notes, I asked questions. I remember I had a friend who would always do better than me on exams when we took Chem A and B together. Just to give you her qualifications, she's currently studying dentistry at Harvard Medical School. Anyways, one day I asked her what her study secret is to always getting straight A's on these super hard chemistry exams. She told me something that would change the trajectory of my studying in the remaining years at UCLA. She told me that understanding the why to each question or concept you had was her key. Instead of blunt memorization, she said if you dig down deeper to the reason of this formula or concept, things will start to connect and make sense. For example, instead of memorizing a medication and what it does to the body, find out why this medication works and how it works. Instead of memorizing the pathways of the cardiovascular system, I started asking how does the cardiovascular system dance to its rhythm and why is it important that it does that? Curiosity fueled my learning. Even though this may be time consuming to really understand how and why things work, this helps you connect the webs to the the overarching learning concept and this trains your critical thinking skills during scenario based exams where you can't just memorize and regurgitate information. Two the power of visualization. Nursing concepts can be complex, so I visualized them. When studying cardiac anatomy, I closed my eyes and imagined the heart as a grand concert hall. The atria were violinists, their bows gliding in synchrony, the ventricles, mighty percussionists, beat like war drums, and the electrical impulses, they were the conductor's baton, guiding the symphony. I know this sounds delusional, but creating a more observed visualization will help you memorize it better. Atrial fibrillation, your violinists are rebels. Ventricular tachycardia, your drums thunder too fast. Or when I was learning about diabetes and glucose levels, I visualized cells hungry for sustenance. I imagine insulin like a key unlocking cellular doors. Three, the dance of mnemonics. When there are times I need to regurgitate facts and information, I would use mnemonics to help me. Mnemonics were my partners in crime. They're memorable because they're odd. Our brains crave novelty and mnemonics serve it on a silver platter. P-E-A for pulseless electrical activity. Brat, B-R-A-T for the bland diet. Bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. When learning about the three L's of hypertension medications, I would talk to myself and say things like lisinopril, L for lower BP. It's an ACE inhibitor, keeping those blood vessels relaxed like a chilled out yoga class. Losartan, L for less salt. It's an angiotensin receptor blocker, telling renin, hey, ease up on the sodium drama. Labetalol, L for lower heart rate. It's an alpha beta blocker, calming heartbeats like a lullaby. These quirky acronyms stuck in my mind like catchy tunes. Four. Utilize external resources, smartphone apps, and study guides. Explore external resources such as smartphone apps and study guides. The main one I used was Quizlet. There are literally so many free resources that you can find and use on the web. Also, sometimes if I'm lucky, the professors will take a couple of questions from these free online study sets and use them on their exams. So you never know because the majority of professors don't actually write their own tests. Another resource I would use is the free test bank exchange at the Students Activity Center. How it works is you bring a previous exam and in exchange for that you can browse the selection of other exams other students previously took. I would study off of those previous tests the other students previously took and sometimes if I was lucky the professor would use the same questions on a test I took. I also 
probably used a lot of YouTube to aid in my learning. Textbooks are like grandparents, wise but a tad old fashioned. But YouTube, they're the cool cousins who know all the gossip. YouTube has a treasure trove of nursing tutorials. The one I used to watch were Registered Nurse RN and Simple Nursing. Nurse Sarah and Nurse Mike would make learning the concepts much more engaging and interesting. These can provide additional insights and reinforce your learning. Bruinwalk.com is another great resource for UCLA students who want to optimize their academic performance and satisfaction. It allowed me to read honest and helpful reviews of professors from students who have been in my shoes. It also gave me useful tips and feedback on how to succeed in their classes. For example, I would read some advice from students who had taken the professor's class and they would guide me to focus more on certain topics for the exams or mention which TA, teaching assistant or UA, undergraduate assistant, were really good in explaining concepts and preparing me for the exams. And lastly, number five, integrate classroom learning with the clinical setting. The hospital became my second home. I shadowed nurses, watched procedures, and held patients' hands. The textbooks came alive as I connected theory to practice. Remember, nursing isn't just about knowing, it's about doing. Whenever I encounter an experience in the clinical setting, I will try to think back on the lecture I had about the topic to connect the classroom knowledge to the real world. This makes it more tangible and easily remembered. For example, when learning about the fundamentals of nursing, such as vital signs and ECGs, when I was in the clinical setting, I would try to find opportunities to listen to an arrhythmia. Or for example, if in lecture we learned about ST segment elevation and a patient was clutching his chest complaining about a constricting feeling, after reading the EKG and seeing the ST segment elevated, I would think this is a sign or symptom of a STEMI or a heart attack in progress. So during my exams, if they ask about signs and symptoms of a heart attack, I can refer back to my clinical experience from the bedside and remember the symptoms the patient was exhibiting. In conclusion, I sincerely hope that the study tips shared in my video will serve as valuable tools for you to excel in your exams. Remember, success isn't just about memorizing facts. It's about understanding concepts. Nursing exams are not just about grades. They're the stepping stones toward a career where lives actually depend on your knowledge. So study smarter, stay curious, and embrace the journey. If you're also interested in learning about some advice and tips I wish I knew before starting nursing school, click this video here.